Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News uh, and welcome to episode two of Trader Talk with uh, Dan from the chart guys. How are you going Dan? Good, how are you? Good, thanks mate. It's been a very, very crazy 24 hours. Yes, it has. Certainly a lot of action all over the place. So probably um, for new um, members to the crypto world, it's probably one of my top three days in the five years that I've been trading crypto. So there was a lot of chaos in regard to Bitcoin Cash. We'll have a look at the charts, we'll dive into that. Um, and we might start off talking about Bitcoin where we left off two weeks ago, Dan, when we last spoke. And I think at the time you were pretty comfortable just watching stair steps higher on the hourly and, and four hour chart. I might bring that up now if you want to talk about what you were sort of looking at. Sure. So, yeah, we were in a, a very clear uptrend as we were heading into the uh, supposed fork. And then we got the news that it had been postponed or canceled or whatever you want to call it. But that led to, you know, that quick rush, that quick all time high to 7900. And that gave us a volume climax. If you look at the four hour time frame, there's just a huge volume candlestick standing out yeah. and that volume climax. And the fact that we pulled back so far from that all time high so quickly gave us a big upper wick showing a lot of profit taking. So on that initial four hour candlestick, we had a range of 7,900 all the way down to 7,031. And I'm looking at Coinbase. Yeah. And so then we traded within that range for 36 hours. And once the low of that range, that four hour candlestick, once that broke, that told me, OK, all time high is in for now. We're entering consolidation mode. And it's obviously been a very significant consolidation mode, but that's when we knew to, you know, take some off, not be looking bullish for more all-time highs, and to be cautious as bulls. Yeah, beautiful. Um, you've described that well in the chart there, mate. So, from I guess from a fundamental point of view, I was very much last time we spoke, sort of advising caution, saying I think there's definitely a top coming. Whether or not we had all those people buying Bitcoin for this for the free coins or whatever reason, but we. We just run too hard, too fast, in my opinion, and there's definitely a bit of euphoria. And I was talking about how there's room for sentiment to change. We need that flush out. We can't just keep going up at this rate. So that, I guess that's what I was looking at from a fundamental point of view. And once we got the news about the fork, then I think everyone sort of, yeah, it's pretty clear that we've had that flush out and definitely a climax today. So do you want to talk about maybe what you, your game plan was going into yesterday because you weren't at the screen necessarily all day um, yesterday, but you had your game plan as far as Bitcoin um, and then all the craziness happened in the world of Bitcoin Cash. So talk about um, your thinking process, Dan. Sure. So I personally trade the big three the vast majority because I'm most comfortable with my capital uh, FDIC insured with Coinbase. So that's where all my focus is on the most significant amount of my capital. So I had a game plan established for Bitcoin where uh, heading into last night, really later, late afternoon, I could see the setup and saw that we were approaching 6,000. And it was really the same play that we had at 3,000 when we had that volume climax and push down on the China fund. And it was entering an area with a clear psychological support level. Back then it was 3,000, this time it's 6,000. And we had the four hour RSI hovering right at 30. And I could see, okay, if we flush under this psychological level, we're gonna trigger a lot of stop loss orders. Those stop loss orders are gonna give us an extra push down. It's gonna to lead to a lot of volume, giving us that volume climax. And we're gonna look for an oversold bounce from there, just on the four hour time frame. We know when the four hour RSI gets in, into the mid 20s on Bitcoin, historically, we see pretty solid bounces. So I just established my game plan this weekend. I've been you know, camping and doing things away from the computer. So I placed my buy orders, just laddered them down from 59 through 57. And I established my plan thinking, OK, if we break 6000, pretty sure we're going to hit 5800. So I averaged it in. So I would be an average of 5800 when my orders all filled. Obviously, we dropped down to 5500 and all of them did fill. And I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning and saw that we were up in the low 6200s. So took that profit and left a little on the table and then took further profit when I saw the top of the bounce was in. So just a, a nice and easy, no stress. I didn't do anything. I slept like a baby and woke up to, you know, 6% gain. So just having that game plan established and not reacting to any emotions. I did miss, you know, the Bitcoin cash run. And that's something that I can deal with knowing that I wouldn't be comfortable with that kind of capital on an exchange that would allow me to, to trade Bitcoin cash. I really like that FDIC insurance. 
to know that the, that something's got my back in case an exchange shuts down or there's a hack or whatever it is. I want that insurance. But uh, yeah, the plan the plan worked well. I didn't get the crazy hundred percent gains, but certainly solid gains and continue to lock those in week after week and we'll be just fine. Yeah, absolutely. And there's there's more to life than trading. And I think normally you're, you're sort of the, the one that is at the screen and I'm normally the one that's um, doing more of my swing trading fundamental style, um, asleep when you're trading or, or vice versa. But from my point of view, um, I'd actually put a survey out on Crypto Australia. We've got 20,000 members and a lot of people said that they were wanting to buy at around 5,500 to 6,000. So again, a number of, um, you know, YouTube channels that look at charts. A lot of people are saying six thousand that 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 level. So you, I was fairly confident that a lot of buyers are going to step in. It's a self fulfilling prophecy when we have these round numbers, people talking about it. But you're right. You've always got to be careful. And maybe that's something we should touch on now. Even though six thousand um, should have hold, um, held, or that's where a lot of people are buying. Stop losses can still trigger, and you should never trade at large positions on on margin because. The market can continue to go against you 10 or 20 percent, and you don't want to get margin called. So, is that? Um, I don't trade a lot on GDAX. That's more for US customers. So, I do a lot of my trading on Bitfinex. Do you see a lot of people get margin called yesterday? And big, big volatility either way on d different coins. Well, with GDAX, they ha the way they have it is you really have to lie to get margin unless you're an institutional investor. So right now it's it's set up to to I don't re meet the criteria. I went through and, and saw you know can I use margin in short and I would have had to have lied to be able to do that. So I just skipped it. So most people aren't trading margin on GDAX at this point. I assume that will change in the future. Okay. But fortunately, that would protect people. I mean, that's essentially what it's doing is protecting. The average Joe who's getting in over their head and thinking they know what they're doing from getting margin call. I think that's. I think there's so many average Joes unfortunately trading on margin. It's too easy to trade on margin on different exchanges. And when we see these huge wicks um, down to 5,500, or I might just bring up the Bitcoin Cash chart. We'll talk about that. Um, when that run on Bitcoin Cash has gone from 300 a few days ago up to you know 2,000, I actually. Um, start to layer in my short position. So I was very confident from a fundamental point of view that this is a bubble. There's no um, nothing that's going to support, sustain this level long term. But because the markets can stay irrational, you should never trade these big positions. And if you look at the week on Bitcoin Cash, it got up to nearly $3,000 from people, I suspect, getting margin called and closing. So always trade small positions, guys. Res respect your capital and be aware that these markets can go against you and get liquidated and push price even further away from what might be fair value. So just something to be aware of. Um, right, so maybe we should talk about where you think Bitcoin price is going now that we've sort of seen a bit of a flush out. Sure. And, and what I'm doing is looking back at the China flood that we had as an example, because if you look at the weekly chart of Bitcoin, we've been going up for you know six straight weeks with no consolidation. The last consolidation that you can look at on the weekly chart is that China flood. So I look back and I see that during that period, we pulled back from the all time high just under 5000 all the way down to 3000. So that was a, uh, you know, a 40 percent pullback. And yeah. where we stand right now, if we were to pull back 40% from 7,900, the all-time high, we'd be looking down at about 4,700. So that's still a good, you know, $800 from the low that we hit. And I'm not going to put it past the potential that we're going to flush down another leg down. And if you look back on the four-hour time frame to that China FUD, you can look and see that we had a short-term bounce when the RSI initially broke 30, and that bounce did not last long. And then we had another leg down, and the four-hour RSI hit 20. And if you compare that four hour chart from the China flood to where we are right now, we had a the dip just below 30. We have a short term bounce and now we're heading back down to those levels. And if we do see another flush down to the low 5000, perhaps right, right on that round, round psychological number, then that four hour RSI will be down around 20 where it bounced on the last FUD uh, fundamental reason. OK, yeah. So I think yesterday I was saying that I think we need a we need a pullback. I think we get a bounce around six thousand, but then I definitely see some chaos 
from the different type of money. So another thing that was very interesting was that this happens on a Sunday. So there's a lot of conspiracy theories. I don't wanna buy into who's pushing the market in either direction, but definitely different people can push the market around in trading on a Sunday. Then now we start to have institutional money and hedge funds stepping in. So they need to reshuffle on a Monday at market open. So I think that's when we get the next leg down. Yeah, entirely possible and certainly not putting it past another low, which is why, you know, I locked in my gains, locked in that profit and now just back to the sidelines and waiting for another opportunity. And another factor for me, I put so much weight into the technicals, is the speed at which we hit these levels. So if we, you know, prolong, bounce around and don't see any dumps in the four hour RSI can hold up while we're seeing lower highs and lower lows very slowly, we can hit a lower level, in my opinion, than if we see the flash dump and get that RSI down to historical bounce levels. So if we, so whenever, whenever I get my targets, it's almost like if we dump tonight and head down, I do expect to bounce from you know 5,000 and see that four hour RSI. But if we just slow bleed, lower highs, lower lows for the next three days, it could get even lower than that without the RSI level getting to such extreme levels. So timing is important. Yeah, and I, and I think we need a reset of um, sentiment and emotion. I don't think that flush we had out yesterday is enough after the, the big run up we've had for weeks, as you mentioned on the, on the weekly chart. We need these extremes in sentiment to get the next wave of investors interested to shake out the weak hands. That institutional money waits for pullbacks. They're not gonna buy at market tops. They're gonna to start to layer in at these levels. And I think we can have another healthy run um, into the end of the year um, once we get that reset. So is there anything else you want to wrap up with, mate? Or you? No, that's it. And I just wanna uh, echo your point about being cautious and protecting your capital, especially during times like this. The last thing you wanna be doing is stuck in a position that's running away from you so whether it's utilizing stop losses or just not using capital that's going to get you in trouble, that's essential because these markets, you know, I'm, I come from the, top, the stock trading background and you don't see moves like this in the stock market very often. You know, a 2% day in Apple is a big day. So when you see a 20% move or in, in the case of Bitcoin Cash, hundreds of percent, this is not a normal market. Obviously, it's very speculative and there's a lot of volatility. It's a pretty difficult trading environment to learn in. It can be very lucrative, but uh, always cautious. Yes, and decide what style of trader you are. So I know you're, you know, you're a big fan of stop losses and all that sort of thing. Personally, I don't like to use those. I trade on fundamental assumptions and swing trading, but that means that I have to be more cautious. If there's no way that I can go to bed with a um, position on that's gonna liquidate me or get margin call with 10 and 20% moves. So I've got to trade small. If you're learning your game, you should be mucking around with $100 or so if you're gonna do these margin trades and, and try and swing trade and day trade crypto. So thanks for tuning in guys. Thanks for chatting with me, Dan. Um, we'll talk again soon. Thanks for having me. Cheers, mate. Bye.